Hi everyone, this is Dayden from Expert Bliss and today I have Lady Kavan, our Emotional Resilience Strategist who will be with us at Freedom Plans Workshop on Saturday, February 6th. I'm really excited about this workshop coming up and especially because we're going to have Kavan there with us um, sharing with us about strategies for thriving after devastation. Hi Kav. Hi, dear. How are you? <laughs> I am glad that you are here with us. Um, it is a time when everybody is processing their own version of trauma or loss or devastation. Grief. You know, yep. Yeah. Dealing grief. That's it. That's exactly it. Grieving some form of loss. Some yep. of the losses in intangibly you know nobody else can see but you you know like maybe mm -hmm. I plan to do a particular trip like I know people who had planned to travel back home to visit family and friends and that had yep. to be cancelled so that's not like a physical thing that you can say oh it's broken or you mm -hmm. can find it and then there are those that have tangible loss where they may have mm -hmm. lost property or lost money or lost loved ones um and everybody has gone through a different thing, whether it was direct um, a direct um, effect of the pandemic or just yeah. life happening. And it is life. happening in the middle of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's a bad thing to happen, but it's happening on top of a pandemic. And so yeah. a lot of people are struggling. Um, and uh, I guess a question that some people have, because some people are feeling kind of hopeless, they're wondering, is it really possible to thrive and have hope after all of this drama? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Living testimony and proof right here. Yeah. Um, I think I think I want to, to address something you just said. I think one of the things that um is is very difficult for people to wrap our minds around is is grieving not something, some intangible things. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. grieving friendships lost, mm -hmm. plans lost, mm -hmm. um, dreams on the back burner. Mm -hmm. it, Delayed and it's a derailed, right? It, and yeah, you know, it's a different kind of grief. It's not one that you can have a funeral for or mm -hmm. something that can mark the end, you mm -hmm. know. Not that grieving a loved one who's passed is um, less know, painful, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But at least sometimes you can have a funeral. You can say words. You can and go other people a share the pain. Of, yeah, and you have other people come with you, and you, mm -hmm. you can mark. There's a ceremony that marks the end of the thing, mm -hmm. and you can have a kind of closure. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you carry. Um, people carry pain and they're mm -hmm. carrying a weight mm -hmm. that prevents them from meeting their goals and and meeting or um the things that we want, want to thrive towards because we have like a a weight you, you can mm -hmm. imagine trying to swim in a pool with 50 pounds of extra weight tied to mm -hmm. your ankles it makes it very unless you're trained as a super um, <laughs> navy seal yes then trying to swim with 50 pound weights on each ankle is not something that is easy to do yeah. um so when i think about loss and what we're going through as a collective mm -hmm. there's a lot of grief that's hanging around in the mm -hmm. room mm -hmm. that we can't quite um verbalize that yeah we can't quite can't put, um, put our finger on yeah 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 but is it, it, it with acknowledging that there what we're dealing with and i think part of why it's 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 kind of this untouchable unnameable loss is because of the uncertainty tied to it you know, mm -hmm. like you gave the example, when there is a date, you know, this is a funeral date, or this is the date I have to move out of the house because I can't afford a mortgage, or this is the day they're going to come and take back the car, or, you know, when mm -hmm. there's a date to mark, or this is the final day at work because I have been laid off. With yeah. the pandemic, there's no end date. Like, we don't know when, when is um, this expiring? <laughs> so that that yeah. uncertainty breathes hopelessness yeah it, it, it fills the air with this this hopelessness that it, it's it's that's that's becoming the 50 pound weight and mm -hmm. with this hopelessness do you really believe that 
there is a point to planning for your financial future, that there's a point to planning that, you know, I'm going to thrive. I'm going to accomplish what I want. I'm going to go somewhere. Is there a point to it? Or should we just say, hmm, let's see what happens? There has to be a point because you, yes, there is uncertainty. We, we've never, I think, we've never known what tomorrow brings. And the mm-hmm. difference between now and then is that it's become real to us. <laughs> that we really do not know That's about true. what tomorrow That's comes. True. Because we've always planned. We've made a plan for the year, but we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. That's no, so it's true. the uncertainty is tangible. You really yeah. don't know what's going no, to happen. No, and I think we need to pause. Just pause somewhere. I don't know <laughs> if, no, that needs to be repeated. We always never knew. <laughs> we always never knew. <laughs> we that always, is, that's solid. That's solid. Like, I, I never even thought about, like, yeah, the uncertainty that we have now, it's not different from the one 10 years ago. Like, it's not. Know, you know, what has, <laughs> but what has changed is that this pandemic has stripped us of the, um, the perception, the, the illusion of control. That is yes, one of the pieces I wrote. That we walk around with this illusion that we're somehow in control of everything. Yeah. And what we're really, the only thing that we have real control over is our response. Yeah, we cannot so dictate world markets. We cannot dictate, you know, horribly. We cannot dictate the drunk driver's response. We mm-hmm. cannot dictate our love one response to us we cannot dictate anything else but my response yeah. to what is happening out there which is a part of what um, I'm very passionate about with emotional resilience is that I'm in control of my response yeah. and regardless of what has happened to me whether or not I was initially responsible for it or mm-hmm. it happened to me mm-hmm. because there are things that we do you know none of us yeah. are perfect we make mistakes or somebody did something to us, we can't necessarily change those things. But what we can do is alter our response. And Mm -hmm. so I'm a firm believer that healing emotionally is a choice. Mm -hmm. I can choose to heal Mm -hmm. or I can choose to sit with my pain Mm -hmm. and either bury it or pretend it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. But when I pretend it doesn't exist or when I... um, bury it or ignore it or whatever Mm -hmm. other coping mechanisms or walls we put up Mm -hmm. we are actually strapping weights on our ankles and it Mm. it 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 prevents us from soaring it prevents us from going towards where we need to go so what you're saying is that the person who has the mindset that i'm just gonna ignore all of this that's happening around me. I'm going to ignore my grief. I'm going to ignore my dreams that are lost. And I'm just going to push past it. I'm not going to acknowledge that this hurts. I'm not going to acknowledge that I feel broken or I'm disappointed. I'm just going to um, tough it out and go ahead. That doesn't work. Is it's gonna so, always that's gonna slow me down? But everybody, I mean, it's it's a trend, you know, to say you know you push past it and you know um, I'm tough, I'm toughing it up. But you're saying it's dragging us down to do that. Why do we need to our address sub, our this subconscious pain? is as much alive as our as our conscious thought, mm-hmm. and a lot of things that happen in our subconscious thought affects our presence and affects our behavior. There are a lot of behavior patterns that a lot of things you don't realize until retrospect, a lot of behavior patterns and mechanisms and things that I thought were a part of my personality mm-hmm. after going through process, I realized wasn't my personality. Oh my it was my defense and my walls that I had put up to protect wow. me. So a lot of times people are interacting not with the real Daidan or the real um, Lady oh. Kavan. They're interacting with my wall. Wow. And so it limits your opportunities and limits your ability to move beyond that. It, it, it limits your opportunities for love. It limits your, wow. your opportunities to um, be the best version of you. And the best version of you is what's going to let you thrive. So if I'm not the best version of me, then it's always going to be a med- mediocre plodding through, tough wow. it out, wall. It's always going to be mediocre until I allow myself to heal. 
and I can't heal what I can't see or what I don't acknowledge. It's like you have um, a broken leg and you, you just decide you're going to walk on the leg. Yeah, man, it, it hurts a little. I'll take two panadols and continue working. What mm -hmm. you're doing is continuing the damage because mm -hmm. you have not paid attention to put it in a cast and allow it to heal. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I think this one, I will need to rewind and replay it and get a journal and sit down and process that because... <laughs> yeah. It makes so much sense. I mean, just my personal reflection on my life, there are times, and it's so true, when people are interacting with the baggage, not with me. And yeah. But once I address the pain that is connected to that baggage, once I grieve the loss and acknowledge that, you know, this impacted me and I deal with it, yeah. then it's like I get rid of that habit or get rid of that tendency or that mindset and then it opens up opportunity for um, relationships that can thrive and yeah. your brain start firing and ideas and wow, that makes a lot of sense. And um, even more now, after having this conversation with you and anybody who's listening to this conversation, it is so obvious why they need these strategies where they need to come to this mini workshop and sit with you and get all the strategies and to just get into a safe space to acknowledge that whatever pain you are going through is real. And by acknowledging that pain and addressing it, you get rid of that 50 pound bag that is tied yeah. to you. So I, mm -hmm. I, I'm blown away. <laughs> I'm blown away. You give me stuff to think about, girl. Yep. I'm I'm and I'm so excited about this workshop because I feel like there are so many of us walking around um and we're not seeing the real people. Yeah. We're interacting with walls and we're interacting with baggage and in order to thrive and be happy and um using a cliche get a new lease on life you know mm -hmm. just to thrive to be mm -hmm. better you mm -hmm. need to address those things before you can do anything else a plan is good you know mm -hmm. we need we need we need a plan need a on how to manage our finances how to um make more, make more revenue and all of those we, mm -hmm. we need it like it's important mm -hmm. but when you wake up every day and there is uh you open your eyes and you think oh another day yeah it's it i You're can not, see i can definitely see how that slows you down because it, you don't yeah. wake up with ideas you don't wake up with energy um oh my goodness we are actually almost like running into the <laughs> workshop right um yeah so I'm, I'm gonna just pull this up pull this up and say you need to be here on yeah. february 6th to dig into these strategies for thriving after devastation you can't be free, you can't make plans, you can't thrive if you are being dragged down by the 50 pound weight of pain and despair and disappointment and grief. So, Lady Kavan, please tell the people where to go. It's what? Um, bit.ly forward slash FPW 2021. That's bit.ly mm -hmm. forward slash FPW as Freedom Plans Workshop 2021. You need to be there. And it's free. It's totally free. free. Bring a friend. Yes. yes. Bring a friend. Come and get your 50 pound bag off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to see you. Come, let's talk. Let's let's deal with this. Yeah. Thanks, Lady Kavan. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.